Let's summarize some of the pros and cons of version A and version B. Let's summarize some of the pros and cons. Version A. In terms of the text of the Quran, وَتُخْفِي فِي نَفْسِكَ مَا اللَّهُ مُبْدِي In terms of concealment, it makes more logical sense that what the Prophet is hiding is not a sin, but it's something embarrassing. Notice it's not a sin. Allah did not say you have to seek refuge. You made a mistake. There's no, there's no them that the Prophet did. But the context of the verse seems to suggest it's something embarrassing, but it's not sinful. And hence, the reports from Anas and Aisha and others and Hassan al-Basri, if the Prophet were to have concealed an ayah, he would have concealed this. It makes sense, version A. Correct? Version A makes sense in that regard. In terms of the sheer quantity of early authorities, in terms of Al-Tabari and Ibn Sa'ad and all of these others, Qatada and what not, Ibn Abbas, it does seem to have been the standard interpretation of early, early Islam. Now, some have said, oh, some of these reports are weak in Isnad. And this is true, some of them are. But firstly, even if one or two are, the sheer quantity of all different narrations found in all different books, really it's not that difficult to say the gist of the story could be deemed to be authentic. Secondly, these same isnads that go back to Qatada and Ibn Abbas and Ibn Zayd and whatnot in a Tabari's tafsir, for example, these are the same isnads that Tabari uses throughout his whole tafsir. So if you want it to be that picky, then you have rejected basically 80% of a Tabari. So this is something to keep into account. Also, there's another point that is raised. Version B says that what was it the Prophet was hiding? Who can remind me? That he was informed that he would eventually marry Zainab. Okay. If he knows he will eventually marry Zainab, why delay it? I mean, if you know it's going to happen, and you believe Allah has told you it's going to happen, it doesn't make sense that you're just going to say, keep your wife. You know you're not going to deny Qadr, correct? I mean, if Allah has decreed it, you know it's not going to be, you cannot get out of it. None of us is going to say this. So it doesn't make any logical sense that if the Prophet knew that eventually he is going to marry Zainab, that he just delays it, delays it, delays it. To what extent? To what point? In fact, if we look at the seerah of the Prophet that type of courage and bravery, he had it all the time. On the story of the incident of uh, Isra al-Mi'raj, the next morning he wakes up and he knows he has to tell the people, right? We talked about that story. And he told them, despite whatever the, 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 the reality might be, right? So, the fact of the matter is, version A, the process of them is embarrassed about a human emotion. Version B, it's as if he is trying to deny Allah's qadr, astaghfirullah. Think about it. Think about the difference. Version A is actually acceptable. Human emotion, you're embarrassed. Version B, you're trying to outwit Qadr or some of this or something like delay Qadr. And that's not, who's going to say that? It's not going to be possible. So that's the pros of version A. What's the con of version A? What's the negative of version A? Obviously, one thing. And that is? So the, the well, then we can say the one thing is, what is the, what is the real problem about uh, version A here, it creates a stigma of our Prophet and his inclinations. This is the real problem. Okay. Why is that problematic? It's actually not problematic at all because he's clearing up any air, any problem was complete. He's sending the very ex-husband. We'll talk about this in the pros and cons of version B. Of version B, okay? The real con right now of version A is obviously the problematization of the inclinations of the Prophet. Many of us, and that's what the majority of the later scholars of tafsir found problematic. As al baghawi explicitly says, it's not appropriate for the maqam and nubuwa. Right? This is the standard feeling. 
that most later scholars of tafsir had. And that's perfectly legitimate. Okay, version B. Those who support version B, they have some solid evidences as well. Of them, one of you mentioned, it's not as if he had never seen Zainab before. Zainab's his cousin, he's grown up with her. It's not as if all of a sudden he's seeing her for the first time. So, they would say, version A does not make sense that instantaneously an inclination begins. After all, the verses of hijab were not revealed until after the marriage, by unanimous consensus. So there is no hijab before this point in time. Also, as you yourself said, he in fact proposed to her on behalf of Zaid. And if he had been interested, he would have proposed directly to her from day one. And Al-Baghawi mentions an interesting point here as well. And this is a really deep point here, so think about this. Al-Baghawi says, Allah says in the Quran, وَتُخْفِي فِي نَفْسِكَ مَا اللَّهُ مُبْدِيهِ You hid in your heart that which Allah would make open. Al-Baghawi says, what did Allah make open? زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا Which is in the Quran. We married you to her. So, version B is supported by the text of the Quran. In that, what did Allah say? Allah did not explicitly say, you were inclined towards her. Correct? It's not in the Quran. وَتُخْفِي فِي نَفْسِكَ مَا اللَّهُ مُبْدِي You hid in your heart that which Allah would make open. Al-Baghawi says, what did Allah make open? The fact that Zainab has married you. زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا And so he says, this shows us that version B is more well, of course, version A, version B, I am saying this, you understand. He simply says this riwayah is more, uh, more weight than the other riwayah. Now, which version is correct in the end of the day? Wallahi, Allah knows best. And I agree with al baghawis final analysis, the final analysis, which is even if version A is correct, it doesn't mean any sin was committed. A man is not accountable for emotions as long as he does not act upon them. And the story does not have any sin in it at all. And that is why even in the Quran, there is no command to repent or that he has done a mistake. Rather, you were embarrassed at something and it was more appropriate that you should have feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, both versions are there. Whoever wishes, and what I do not though uh, agree to is this claim by especially later people in our times that version A is a fabrication that the non-Muslim zanadiqa evil heretics have put into our books. This is honestly, you know, it doesn't behoove us. It sounds, you know, we love conspiracy theories. This is a problem with the Muslim ummah. We love conspiracy theories. Blame it on this and blame it on that. And no, version A is a part of our tradition. It's clearly mentioned by most, if not all, of the early scholars. This is the reality, right? Version B is also referenced. It's there. Eventually, version B becomes the standard. Okay. Now, whoever says version A, let him follow al baghawi and Ibn Qayyim and others. And that's not a problem. That, okay, what happened in and of itself is not sinful. And our Prophet wasallam. now this really goes back to how we view our Prophet that do, is there any problem in viewing him as a normal man with normal inclinations? In fact, there are plenty of references in the seerah that clearly indicate this. And of them is the marriage with Juwaidiyah. If you remember Juwaidiyah, right? That when Juwaidiyah came to ask for her people, Aisha said, as soon as I saw her, I hated her. Because I knew what the Prophet would see. Now this hadith is authentic, reported in all the books of, you know, it's like, I hated her because I knew the Prophet would see in her what I see, and he would think exactly what I'm thinking. Right? And that's exactly what happened. That when Juwadiyah came, and Juwadiyah said, I am the son of, I am the daughter of the chieftain, I am the bint of Fulan and Fulan, I am, I am, I am. She's arguing to free her people. So the Prophet said, why don't... I free you and marry you. And in fact, her people were freed at that marriage. We all talked about this, right? right? But what did Aisha say? That I knew the Prophet would see in her what I saw in her. And in my humble opinion, I think a Prophet that is human 
is a prophet that I can actually relate to and look up to. Whereas when you make the prophet into this semi-mystical figure who is above humanity, subhanAllah, what is wrong with a prophet that has normal male inclinations but can control them? That is perfection. That is perfection. That he never once, sallallahu alayhi wa did anything wrong. Despite having the same inclinations me and you have. To me, that is the role model. When you make the prophet into an angel that does not have any inclination, then where is the role model for us? You see what I'm saying here, right? And even in this version, if you were to say version A, which the majority of early scholars said, honestly, what is there that is problematic? It is possible that inclinations come later on in life. It is possible. But what did the Prophet do? He turned away and he said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah al-Azim, Subhana muqallib al qulub and he kept it. And that is exactly what you're supposed to do. Right? It's exactly what you're supposed to do. And it so happened that Zayd never liked Zainab in the first. And it was vice versa. And now this is an excuse for Zayd khalas. Alhamdulillah. It's for Zayd it's a burden off. He doesn't want such a wife. Because she was harsh to him. She did have a sharp tongue. She did consider herself to be, you know, not appropriate for Zayd from day one. So Zaid says, perfect opportunity. Ya Rasulullah, let me divorce her, let me divorce her, let me divorce her. And the Prophet is embarrassed. And, mubdi. Keep her. Amsik wa Until finally Zaid cannot take it anymore without the Prophet telling him he still divorces her. Once it is done, now she is a, a free lady without any husband. Why not? Well, should the, why should not the Prophet marry her? So he sends the, mar the, the proposal. And then Zainab herself doesn't just jump for joy. Zainab says, let me pray istikhara. Let me think. And as she is praying, Allah reveals in the Quran, وَزَوَّجْنَاكَهَا And Aisha says, Ibn Abbas says, Al-Hasan al-Basri says, if the Prophet were to have hidden any verse in the Quran, it would have been this one. It is in the end of the day, awkward. But it's not haram, it's not sinful. Wallahi, every man is embarrassed when he might have inclinations for a woman. That is, you know, it's, it's human nature. We are all going to be embarrassed. But it's not haram if it is controlled. So, bottom line, version A, it's there, whoever follows it, that's fine. Version B is also there, whoever follows it, that is also uh, fine. Uh, and uh, just a very quick uh, side point, some scholars have tried to merge the two versions together uh, and bring forth another story. And whoever does this as well, inshallah, that too is fine. Uh, let's just conclude with the story of Zainab, that Zainab continued to live a life of piety, a life of taqwa. Uh, she was well known for taking care of the uh, orphans. Uh, she was called Umm al-Masakin, the, the mother of the poor, the mother of the, the orphans. And uh, we already mentioned that the Prophet said that the first one to die will be the one with the longest hand. So when the, uh, the Prophet passed away and Umar began sending uh, Ata, and Ata was, uh, so uh, let me explain to you now. Umar, Abu Bakr and Umar had a different policy. Abu Bakr would give a stipend to everybody in Medina uh, exactly equal. Everybody got the same amount of money. It's a salary from the government for being who they are. Uh, Umar said, no, I'm going to make a list, a criterion. Category A, B, C, D, E, F, G. He had a whole list of people, right? And the highest category were the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. And then the earliest converts. And then the middle converts. And then the late converts. And then the conquests of Mecca converts, which are the last category. Fatih Mecca. Right? That was the last category. So the number one category are the wives of the Prophet. They get the biggest amount. And that amount was 12,000 dirhams. That is a fortune. 12,000 dirhams would be sent annually. And Zainab was given this 12,000. And it was poured in front of her. Cold coins all the way up. And she kept on saying, La hawla la khusa la billah, subhanallah al azim, you know, may Allah protect us from fitan. And she kept on looking at this money. And as the money is in front of her, she gave this much to her servant, said, Go to the house of so and so. Then she gave this much, Go to the house of so and so. And she kept on doing this until not a single penny was left. The whole 12,000, imagine 12,000 coins, one by one by one by one. She did not go to sleep until she had nothing left. Umar heard of this. And she said, and he said, what a lady this is. And he visited her house, knocked on the door and said, I heard what you did to the money. Here is another thousand for you. And what do you think she did with that thousand? All gave it away. 
And she made a dua to Allah, oh Allah, let me not see this money again next year because money is a fitna. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, money is a fitna. Money is a fitna. Imagine if somebody gave you a million dollars right now, what would you do with that, right? Thank Allah that Allah is not testing you with that type of wealth that is beyond your, your control. Right? Money is a fitna. And so she said, Oh Allah, let me not see this money again. And so she passed away before her salary came of the next year. Right? That whenever Umar decided to do it, so she passed away the next year. And she passed away in the 20th year of the Hijrah, the first wife of the Prophet to pass away. And Umar was the one who prayed her janazah prayer for her. And all of the major Sahaba walked to Baqi' al Gharqad. And she was the first of the wives of the Prophet to be buried. And all of the wives of the Prophet are buried in that same place. And the first of them, Zainab, is right there. She is the first wife of the Prophet to be buried in uh, that place. And uh, Zainab was known as being Sawwama al Qawwama and someone who was. As Aisha herself said, I never saw a woman more muttaqi than her. This is Aisha saying, right? So wallahi, she deserved to be our mother of the believers. She deserved to be the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And whatever story you follow, version A, version B, both of them are valid. There's nothing wrong with either of them. And the fact of the matter is, when you have an evil heart, you can take the in most innocent story and make it the worst story. And when you have a pure heart, then... Innocent stories will remain innocent. You don't, you know, you, the, 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 the non-Muslims who want to disparage the Prophet them, they don't need Zainab's story. They can do it from any incident. And we have seen this enough. So those who believe in the Prophet them, and we are all inshallah of them, we don't have any problem in my opinion with either version of events, right? And those who don't believe in him, wallahi, they have bigger problems to worry about than this and that version. And in the end, Zainab is our mother. She's the mother of the believers. And she deserves all of the praise that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her. And with that, we conclude if there are any questions about uh, this, inshallah ta'ala, yes.